no matter what you want to buy. You'll find it all on the hub. The SME Market Hub. Buy, sell, list, connect. Hi, my name is Shelley from Pomanso. I'm a film producer, director, and we're here in Accra, Ghana. My interest in film started when I was very young. Um, as far back as um, perhaps when I was six years old, because I remember loving to watch films on TV very much and I always sort of wondered how they were able to put all of this together. I knew that it was make-believe but then the fact that they could actually make it so real for people to actually react to it, it was just um, awesome for me. So I knew immediately that it, it was where I wanted to go and so right from um, kindergarten through primary school through secondary school I, 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 I involved myself a lot in film and production and playwriting and performances, all of that. I remember very well when I was in secondary school, I was in the drama club. I did a lot of writing, I did a lot of performance on stage. In fact, I did a lot more performance on stage. So those people who know me from back then thought that I was actually going to become an actor. I had a bit of a struggle before I actually went into to learn film film production because my, my father wanted me to do law because he thought I had a mouth <laughs> and I had an opinion. Yeah, but then I stuck to my grounds and um, I ended up at the National Film and Television Institute and that's when I, I majored in directing and script writing. My favorite movie when I was a kid was The Ghost Must Be Crazy. I thought it was so fascinating. I laughed so hard. Honestly, it confused me at some point because I thought, is this a documentary or is it a movie? Because it was just too realistic. So yeah, I love that movie and till today I still love it. It's actually one of my favorite movies of all time. I went to the National Film and Television Institute and I majored in directing. We were made to learn also about sound and photography and stuff. But of course, in the third year going to fourth year, then I majored in in my field which was directing but then I also loved writing a lot so obviously I took that hand, hand in hand. I started working when I was in school. I started working in my second year when I was in school. In fact before I got into um, the film school I was actually working. I worked in radio. I did radio presenting, I did television presenting and producing so I was a full-time worker when I got into school. So I struggled a bit with my, 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 my school shuttle because then I had to try and balance it from what I was doing outside and what I was doing in school. So I actually um, put Sparrow Productions together when I was in school. I, I, I rented a small place, I slept in one room and then I used the other room for an office and then I hired a, a certain young girl to sit at the reception and and pick up calls that never came really but it was really exciting so that's when I started and then I got into a partnership of a sort with another colleague so we started doing productions we did a, a television show called Heart to Heart which was like a blind date sort of thing and then afterwards we were planning other things so by the time I finished school the transition was not very huge because I was already working yeah I think the the, the real challenge came when I have finished school and obviously that distraction was gone and then I, I was faced fully with okay what am I going to do with this and then I realized that there were a lot of other production houses out there and so for me to actually stand out I needed to pick something that was going to make me almost relevant immediately and so that's how come the Miss Ghana pageant came along so I actually went into pageantry before I actually started doing real film. My vision for Sparrow Productions was putting together a bunch of young, creative, talented people to do very big things, okay? And that's actually what, um, um, you know, in, in sort of influenced the name Sparrow because I remember when I was registering the company, my, my lawyer asked me, he said, 
what do you want to call this production company? I said, look, I don't know what I want to call this production company, but I know what I want this production company to do. I know that we're going to be very small because obviously we're starting, but we're going to do very big things. And so I want something, an icon or some form of image that can represent exactly that vision. And then he said, I know of a sparrow, a bed type of a sparrow that, you know, because sparrows are very tiny, but they fly very high, like all the way up. And I said, ah, oh, perfect. Mm. Yes, I make my own money, but that doesn't mean that my wealthy boyfriend shouldn't cater to some of my needs. The, the whole idea that was backing this vision was the fact that we're going to tell progressive African stories. Okay, because um, I was, I, I, I recognize also that at the time that I was about to start all of this, there were a lot of African stories out there, especially from my community in Ghana. And a lot of it was focused on witchcraft, a lot, of, a lot of it was focused on um, how women were, um, you know, more like the weaker sex because I, I had seen a lot of these productions where women were thrown out of their homes because the man chose to go and marry another woman or even the man's mother would come in and bring another woman and then this woman would be chucked out because she never worked, she's got kids and so I always had this image of the African woman who's out there with her kids on the streets and she's basically, she basically has nothing. Frank, and from my point of view, I had, I had, I, you know, I, I knew of my family, my mom, my mom was not that kind of African woman. I knew of friends who were aspiring to be great. I knew of other African women around the globe who were doing great things. And so for me, I thought it was about time we changed that concept, that perception of the African woman. So based on that, plus the fact that I thought, you know, we are going, as, Af as, as a continent, we're going, we have to be wanting to go somewhere. Progress, progression. And so I thought, okay, I like to tell stories that progresses our course. Okay, because we have all of these big networks that show Africa, hunger and poverty and stuff like that. And I also, I had, I had traveled to Kenya, I had come to Nigeria, I was in Ghana, and I've seen that there, there were a lot of developments coming up, and we never um, highlight that. You know, the CNNs and the BBC, they never highlighted those things. And so for me, I thought it was the, the opportunity to be able to put these things across. So that was definitely a main reason. That's why I don't swear, drink, or have sex on Tuesdays. Are you feeling down? Stop! I was lucky enough to have some friends and family who obviously believed in my cause and were able to help me to buy an equipment here or two to actually begin it. So these were some of, these were some of the, uh, for want of a better word, rude awakenings that I sort of, you know, I got confronted with once I decided to actually do production. And I wanted a fresh angle to all of it, okay? So I did a lot of auditions. And I, I even realized at the time that there, were, there weren't a lot of auditions going around because nobody was really looking for new faces. You know, it was just the old ones. So I did a lot of auditions. I wanted the stories to be more urban, more, more progressive, you know. And I got a lot, of, a lot of people telling me, you're not telling the African story. Even today, I still get it. You're not telling the African story. And I keep on asking, what is the African story? I mean, what, poverty and, you know, women abuse, is that the African story? Because as far as I'm concerned, I am part of the African story. And so to tell the story from this angle, I think does a lot more good than, than bad. And then apart from that, I also realized that when it comes to production equipment, there, there weren't a lot of places where you could actually rent a camera or sound um, equipment or you know stuff like that so immediately my, my, my immediate problem was that I needed to find my own source of money to be able to invest in my own equipment if I was going to be able to do anything at all so immediately you are confronted with money funding okay and so this is this is where your your, your dream is either completely killed because you can't if you don't have the money you can't go on or if you're fortunate enough to have friends and family who can support it, then of course, then you are able to advance. 
I'm hoping that we will be able to change our distribution platform, um, i.e. we'll be able to get a lot more cinemas because I know that if the cinemas are there, we'll get people to go in there and watch it, no matter what the numbers are. I also hope that the up-and-coming actors especially don't see this kind of platform as a, as a perhaps a beauty pageant type thing where they're going to get famous because I realize a lot of that is beginning to happen. People just want to get on TV because they think that, you know, it's going to make me popular, probably make me more money. I'd hope that people will begin to get really passionate about their craft and our actors would want to educate themselves to be even greater actors so that we can even tell better stories because then they are more versatile and we can do with them whatever it is we want to because we have a lot of stories you know and if our actors are able to translate the stories the way we want to by educating themselves then we'll be able to take our stories very far hi guys if you just enjoyed watching that video and you want to stay up to date with the latest in entertainment lifestyle and more from inside africa why don't you hit the subscribe button right now and if you want to keep on watching videos then just simply hit the more videos button